welcome. Tonight is an evening uh, class and I call it Hoffa, Funky Hoffa because it can be a little bit flowy, it can be a little more um, static, uh, <laughs> might be a little gentle, there might be a little yin, just a, kind of a cool combination um, with no exact one landing pad. So welcome to that. And tonight we're going to start lying down and now you can lie down with absolutely no support whatsoever. Um, but if you've got some pillows or you've got some blankets and you want to kind of build up a little support under your back, what I am going to do is take a yoga block and I'm going to take a pillow and I'm going to create a little um, ramp that my head will rest up here closer to the yoga block. And then hopefully this, uh, blanket, or I mean this pillow will support my back. You could use a blanket and then what you might do is just kind of fold it or roll the end of the blanket up so your head is held up a little higher and then there's kind of a slope going down toward your hip. It may not be, depending on how thick the blanket is, <laughs> it may not be quite as dramatic a slope as this but it would still give you the same notion. Okay, or you can just roll up a blanket put it under your back like this. So if you roll a blanket up, put that down the length of your spine, it'll kind of give you a little elevation. Now, I'm going to use my blanket under my legs. So, oh, <laughs> that pretty well landed just right, actually. Usually I have to fiddle with that, but that went pretty well. So I have um, found my way onto this little ramp that I built. <laughs> so um, I'm going to make decisions about how I want my legs. So this feels pretty nice to have the legs out straight. Um, I could bring the feet together and open the knees out, which was my intention, which is why I have the blanket. Um, or you can have your feet resting on the floor, maybe even knock the knees together. Maybe that little bit of an internal rotation in the hip would feel really nice. Actually, it did feel pretty nice. So <laughs> choosing from amongst those options. And then let yourself settle into some position that allows you to be present and breathe. For me, there's what because of the little ramp and my arms are hanging off of the ramp, there's a little kind of sensation at the front of the shoulder, and I'm just playing with my arms for now until I find the spot that's just right. <laughs> not too much sensation, not too little, just right at, the, at a good spot where I can feel a little opening, a little stretchiness happening in the front of the shoulder, but without any numbness, tingling pain, or anything like that. There's a lot of nerves that come out of the sides of the neck and down through the area between the collarbone and the uh, shoulder blade and the, head, the arm bone. So if there's any numbness or tingling in your fingers, that does generally indicate that we're doing something in, the sh in that shoulder, that area where the collarbone kind of meets the shoulder blade. And you may want to make some adjustments too. And then pause, right? So the whole point of any contemplative or mindfulness practice is to pause, breathe, get really present in the moment and we're just kind of shutting out all of the little to-do lists and stuff we're going to do later and blah, 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 blah. And just arriving here in this little present moment here. Feeling ourselves kind of settle and get clear. All that other stuff will be waiting for us when we're done, but for right now, we're just gonna breathe. Take about four more deep breaths. Right, so good. 
gently bring my knees together. And before I take myself off of my little ramp here, I'm going to stretch myself out. Oh, and just let my arms kind of drop over my head a little bit. This gives me a nice little stretch on the backs of my arms, which I sometimes need and appreciate. Oh, and then I'm going to slide everything out from under me. So we are going to use something to hold on to our big toe. Not right away, but in a minute. So, so some of us will be able to just hold on to our big toe with our peace sign fingers um, and that won't be a problem. But if that is a problem, <laughs> and grab like a little hand towel or a scarf or if you have a yoga strap, grab one of those while you're moving around and just put it within easy reach. All right, so now I'm off of the pillow, but I want to do a little tiny bit of movement. So I've got my feet placed fairly wide apart and I'm just sort of dropping one knee into the middle like a windshield wiper movement and letting my hip come all the way off the ground as I'm doing it. So it almost turns into a twist, mild twist. <laughs> just going back and forth. I don't know what the disco hands are about, but I'm keeping it, it's, it's fun. <laughs> oh. Add a little leg in the middle there, and it'll get even better. Okay. So then I'm going to pick a direction and I think I'm going to go to the right first. So I'm just going to let my legs fall to the right. Now you could wrap the legs around each other. You could put a pillow or a blanket or something underneath to kind of pad up the surface for your legs to rest on something a little softer. You can get really loose here. Just let gravity have you. Just basically become a big pillow or um, marshmallow. Um, or you can be a little more active so you can reach that top leg out, kind of roll the shoulder down, really try to give yourself some length down the side of your waist on that top side there. Now because I chose to go to the right, my left leg is the more active member of this stretch. So that is the one where I'm going to either grab hold of that big toe or I'm going to put the strap around my foot. I Just a spoiler alert, I am going to put the strap around my foot. So, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And then with my inhale, I'm going to come to the center here. And I've already got my foot in the strap. <laughs> and I am going to let my right side sort of sink back into the floor. And then I'll figure out like how much should I pull my leg towards my torso. If I start to feel like the whole stretch is happening just at the one attachment point at the sit bone, that's too far. So you want to uh, be straight enough that you feel a stretch from maybe from the heel all the way down the whole back of the leg, but not so much um, that you're feeling a really sharp um, sensation right there at the sit bone. You want that distributed across the whole back of your leg. I like to push the heel up for a little extra sensation in the calf muscles since that's generally more the place where I feel tightness is around my Achilles tendon and calf muscle area more so than my hamstrings. For you, it might be the opposite. So go with what's appropriate for you. Now I'm gonna turn just a little bit in my space so that I have a little bit of room Otherwise, I'm going to hit the plants because um, <laughs> with my exhale, I'm going to take my leg out to the side. Now, if you are similarly in a cramped space, you could, instead of taking your leg out, you could roll onto your side um, and then as you kind of press the leg up toward the ceiling, it'll be a little bit of a stretch in that inner thigh. And I like that version a lot. In fact, it's become one of my favorite pandemic poses. Um, <laughs> so I'm all about it. <laughs> For today though, I'm doing this version instead ugh, so that I have just a little different relationship to gravity than I've had lately. Now I have a little blanket tucked up under the edge of my hip just so that my femur bone has a place where I can kind of press it into the floor and then use 
my abdominal muscles to roll my opposite hip toward the ground. So I'm stabilizing my pelvis and my torso. So the stretch in my inner thigh is a little more active. You can also, again, be very passive here and just let gravity have a hold of you. <laughs> it has a hold of you anyway, thank goodness. <laughs> you might as well give in <laughs> if you're so inclined. <laughs> Occasionally, I actually hear myself talking to you guys. Sounds pretty silly. That was one of those moments. <laughs> So we're going to take a few more breaths here and then I'll try to rein myself in a little bit. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> okay, taking a big breath. And then we're coming on back. So I'm gonna bend my knee and I'm placing my left ankle just up on top of my right thigh. And then I'm gonna do one more little rock back and forth like I did with those windshield wipers at the beginning, but this time with that one leg crossed over the other. And then as I go back and forth, I just get a little extra sensation in different places. New, <laughs> new little muscles are discovered here. Be mindful of your knees. I also sometimes find that my clothes ride up or ride down, so you may have to do a little bit of wardrobe malfunction adjustment at the end. Oh, so two more breaths. And I'm basically moving with the breath one direction on the inhale, and then the other direction with my exhale. So now I'm done. So I'm coming back to the center, and I'm just going to take a moment before I do the other side and just stretch out both my legs and see if I can perceive any um, impact from the practice that I just did. So right now my perceived impact is that my left leg is longer than my right leg. If measured, I doubt this would be true. But there's a sense of ease and release in the left leg and not just the leg, but it comes all the way up the hip and through the side of my waist. Even my left rib cage feels like it's a little more in contact with the ground. There's a little bit less um, sensation in my lower back and hip flexor on the left side. Whereas on the right side, it feels quite disjointed a little bit. And I think it's just the contrast. I'm not sure if I would have said I feel disjointed at the beginning of this, but now I do. <laughs> so the right leg feels like it's kind of being tractioned a little bit. There's a sense that the kind of low back is a little archy, that there's a little less contact with my shoulder on the ground. So I'm going to see what happens, right? I'm going to do the other side. Once I do the other side, <laughs> then I'll see at the end if things have come back to a more neutral position. So again, I've got my legs positioned quite far apart and I'm going to do these little windshield wiper, kind of dropping the leg in, letting the hip go all the way with me just so that there's no extra strain anywhere. And this is sort of the prep for our twist. Now I went to the right last time, so clearly I'm going to the left this time. So when I'm ready, I'm just going to transform that all the way over. And all I did last time was stack one leg on top of the other, so that's what I'm doing this time as well. But again, if you did something else, you added a prop or you wrapped your legs around each other or you grabbed hold of that big toe, do all of those things. So again, I'm being a little bit more active, kind of stretching my leg a little bit towards the, the you know, this right leg a little towards the left, rolling really actively my right shoulder towards the ground. So I've got quite a lot of activity happening right here with my obliques. Begin to feel the muscle fatigue as I hold it longer. So again, I could take a really passive because gravity will just hold me like this, but I'm just trying to be a little more active there just for fun. There's no right answer. You just make a choice and go with it, y'all. Two more breaths. So again, 
Before I come back to the center, I'm gonna go ahead and just lasso my right foot and then I'll come on back. Let my left leg get all the way straight and kind of settled into the ground. Whoop. I've got to reset myself here, but you get the notion. And then I play with the right leg until I find the right amount of stretch that doesn't feel like I'm ripping anything right at the attachment point for sure. just a little like pull the toes down just a little bit and press up through my heels so I get just a little extra love from my calf muscle area <laughs> just realized I was making a face so now I'm trying to relax my face <laughs> uh, I invite you to do the same <laughs> more breaths. It feels really nice. All right, so I'm taking my leg out to the side. And again, if you did the kind of rolling onto your side version of that, go for that again on the other side. Whatever you did last time, do this time. Um, and just see how it goes. I have also experimented with like doing one thing on one side and a different thing on the other side. It's fun. <laughs> you know, it's rare in any yoga practice that we do anything that's permanent. Generally, the body kind of um, adjusts itself with whatever it is that we <laughs> practice. But the initial reaction might be kind of interesting. Now I've, I'm noticing a great deal more sensation on this side, so I'm just going to tuck my support up a little closer and give myself a tiny bit less of that intensity, still using my muscle to try to hold my left hip to the ground as I kind of press into this strap. I'm pulling on it just lightly, giving myself a little extra stru um, structure. And again, I'm choosing a very active practice. You might be choosing something a little more passive, a little more relaxed. All right, two more breaths. So I'm going to bring my left foot to the ground and bring in this right leg back and then just dropping that right leg up on top of the left one. And then I'm just letting myself sort of wobble the legs back and forth left to right. Now I find it's more dramatic when I have the left leg on top than when I have the right one on top, but there's still some interesting little like muscle areas that I discover around my outer hip and kind of in this tucked into the little area between my rib cage and my low, um, pelvis and my low back. So just being mindful and gentle <laughs> with some of those areas, they can be a little responsive <laughs> to overdoing it. <laughs> hyper responsive. Let's say hyper responsive. <laughs> uh, all right. So I'm coming back to the center, I'm just going to unwind and one more time before I get uh, or change tacks here, or change um, positions, I'm going to just notice how it went and I've done some movements so now I'm just settling, letting gravity kind of have me and getting really relaxed. And in general, like, there's always a slight bit of asymmetry for me, you know, a little bit different from right to left, but mostly what I'm feeling now is similarity. So the legs feel like they're about the same length. There is a, a more kind of um, even sense of weight on the right hip versus the left hip and where my, you know, which rib touches the ground here at the bottom of the rib cage and how the weight distributes across my shoulders. Like that all feels pretty even. I don't, the 
you know, the last time I checked in, it felt quite asymmetrical. So this is a much more a sense of symmetry, even though there's like a slightly tighter sense of my right side than my left uh, going down into the belly a little bit, which is normal. So just checking in again, I like to check in with my practice as I go. Um, it helps me do a few things. One is it just helps me be more present for the practice. It's not really about the poses. <laughs> it's about the mindfulness and uh, being present for the um, changing landscape that is the uh, physical body. Um, and then um, it also helps me learn how pushy to be or how less pushy to be. So we are essentially just going to flip ourselves like a pancake. We're just going to flip right on over onto the belly. Oh, I have to do a little bit of readjusting because, you know, mats are narrow. <laughs> now, um, I'm going to place my hands on the floor with the palm quite um, pressed down and the fingers spread out a little bit. I'm not spreading my fingers out as wide as I can. This is not, we're not trying to play the bassoon here. We're just going to kind of bring the, you know, fingers apart a notch. So there's no sense of um, strain around the finger joints. But what I am going to do is try to press the whole palm into the floor. And when I lift, I'm going to use the floor kind of pulling backwards against the resistance of the mat to draw the elbows back and broaden the front of the shoulder. This pose is called cobra pose, not black snake pose or um, adder pose or <laughs> green garter snake pose, like none of that. It's called cobra and cobras have one thing in particular that they um, are unique and that's this kind of spreading open of a little hood that lives around their head. So that's the reason it's called that is because of this action in the shoulders. So we're going to press the palm down nice and firm, press the legs into the ground, lift your upper back off the floor. Now you're doing that with your back muscles because it's a snake pose. If you, <laughs> right, the snakes don't have arms. So what are the arms doing? The arms are acting as this hood. So you press the palms down, pull backwards and broaden this whole area right around the shoulder. So we're feeling this kind of resistance of the palm against the floor. And you can lift a little higher if you've got the back muscle strength to do it. And then we come on back down and then just kind of roll your shoulder blades around a little bit on your back. Give them a little jiggle, move them up and down, and we'll slide the hands back ever so slightly, maybe a half inch or an inch. Press the palms down nice and firm, lift into the cobra, pull the elbows back against the resistance of the floor, broaden the chest out. Okay, I'm letting my neck be really soft, just kind of go along for the ride, come on back down. Same idea, so in the same hand position, just moving the shoulders. That causes any wrist trouble, come up onto your fingertips, see if that's better. Oh. Oh. All right. One more time, slide my hands back ever so slightly, about a half an inch to an inch, anchoring through the legs, lifting as best I can into Cobra, pulling the elbows back and against the resistance of the floor, really broadening my chest. Oh. And then I'm just going to hold that and slide my elbows underneath me so it becomes a sphinx. So for me, it's pretty close. I come down just a little bit. So if for you, your back is a little bit, um, like you can lift a little higher off the floor. It'll feel like a bigger drop. Um, if you can't lift as high off the floor, it might feel like you came up a little bit. So just position your elbows so it's the right amount of back bend for you. I like the elbows a little closer together than a shoulder distance apart. And then drop your chin. We're just gonna travel the chin kind of up over the collarbone and then looking back behind you see if you can spy your little toes it doesn't matter if you really can it just matters that you're looking in that direction <laughs> so chin up and over the other shoulder maybe you can see the little toes maybe not coming back to the center up and over the first shoulder and i just close my eyes at this point because i don't care if i can see my toes i've got my head kind of oriented in that direction so i know what i'm up to and I can feel the little muscles in my neck <laughs> stretching to look out over the shoulder. Ooh, I'm using a little bit of muscle to hold myself up so it's not totally passive. Ooh. All right. 
And then we're going to come back maybe to a child's pose. Um, if you'd prefer, you can go directly to downward dog if you and child's pose aren't really friends. Now, downward dog is an interesting pose. So if it's one that you like, it's, you know, you like having the weight on your arms or having your head below your hips. There's a couple of different elements to downward dog. So if that all feels good to you, go for it. And if for any reason that is just not appropriate, um, and even child's pose is a little tricky, then you can try some hands and knees or even a squatting, you know, get on your feet and come to a squatting position that is often very nice as far as I am concerned. Um, <laughs> so just pick a few poses where you can move around a little bit. And then what is basically gonna happen is we're gonna meet up um, on our feet. Once you're on your feet, <laughs> you might already be there. You might have beat me up onto your feet. And that is okay too. Correct any wardrobe malfunctions that have occurred. <laughs> Tuck everything back in. <laughs> Ugh. Give everything a little shake. <laughs> so that we're able to pay attention, right? So if <laughs> I've got a massive wedgie, I'm only going to be able to pay so much attention before I fix that. So just fix it, <laughs> get it over with, and then let yourself come to kind of a sense of just standing firmly and evenly on your feet. And notice the, what the sensation is. Is there a little bit of fatigue anywhere in your body? Does the body feel heavy or light at ease or a little bit less? I can tell that I ate lunch a little too late. <laughs> so there's a little bit of a sense of that. So we're going to take a nice big breath, reach the arms up, and give yourself a nice big stretch. And then we're going to come to a chair pose. And just hanging with that chair for a couple breaths. You can bring your arms down if having the arms up by the ears is problematic. We're going to shift the weight into the right leg. And just see if you can pick the left leg up and hold this sort of one leg chair. <laughs> and then we're gonna take that leg and step back and we're gonna wind up in a warrior one shape in a second. <laughs> as soon as I catch the balance and <laughs> stop falling. All right, so warrior one, my heel goes to the ground. There's a little bit of a diagonal, but I'm gonna face my rib cage forward. And so adjust the feet so that that happens easily without any trouble for your knee. You're gonna push the um, left foot in this case backwards and the right foot a little forwards. And then bring the arms up, oh, pull the elbows back, kind of squish the shoulder blades together, push the hands forward. Arms up, shoulder blades squish, arms forward, arms up, shoulder blades squish, oh, arms forward. Now. You can wrap your arms around behind your back, place your fingers together, grab a wrist, or leave your arms loose. We're gonna straighten out this front leg on the way down. And at some point, you're gonna get permission to either go all the way to the point where your forehead touches your shin, or somewhere before that point. <laughs> this is gonna be a point where you feel your hamstrings say, yep, that's, that's quite enough. For me, it's just a little bit past level, <laughs> generally is where that right set of hamstring says, yep, that's good. And we'll stop there. And again, if I try to go too far, I'm gonna get all of that sensation distributed right at the sit bone. I wanna repeat the action that I did with the strap and try to get the whole leg, the whole back of my leg to distribute that stretch. Mm. 
Now, we're gonna take this into a balance, and you can, if you've got a piece of furniture, or you've got a couple of yoga blocks, you can use them to help you balance. We're gonna take this left foot up off the ground, and then maybe put the toe back down, launch yourself back up, see if you can get your hips really level, and then <laughs> I'm gonna do one more little launch, just because I think it's fun to go up and down a little bit. Then see if you can balance without holding on to anything. Oh, it might not be true. <laughs> Wee. Then we're gonna bring that left knee back in and come back to our chair pose. Oh. And then back to the mountain pose. Oh. And see. <laughs> can you feel the difference between the right side and the left side? Oh. Now, even though I just did all of that stuff on my right side, it feels less fatigued than when I started. There's a kind of energizing quality to me, to some of those poses that we do standing up. Let's do the other side. So we're going to take a nice big breath, reach up. Oh, give it a good stretch. And then come to chair pose. And find the chair so that it feels nice and balanced. Again, you can change the arms. You can sink in deeper or act more like you're sitting on a bar stool. Like you get to decide what kind of chair you're sitting on. And then putting the weight on that left leg, we're gonna see if we can hold the chair shape, but just pick that right foot up. And do this little one-footed chair, one leg chair. <laughs> and then we're gonna try to step ourselves back and catch a warrior one pose. Get a slightly smoother drop on that on this side. Press again back, this time my right foot, my right leg is pressing backwards and my left foot is pressing forward. And then I'm gonna bring my arms up, elbows back, push forward. Okay, one more of those. And again, you can bind your arms or do a little reverse prayer or leave your arms loose. We're gonna straighten out the front leg and fold ourselves over. Stopping when we get the sensation in the back of this leg at the point where it says, yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, so from time to time, come back and just try to release tension from my neck, my jaw, my eyes. <laughs> wherever the tension might be. And two more breaths. Now, again, I'm going to do this little like launch myself up and return several times. I'm trying to find like a way to move so smoothly through that transition that it oh it just feels you know just really peaceful <laughs> and not too jarring and then trying to find the balance without my hands catching if I know I'm gonna fall all right then bringing oh, <laughs> if I can bring in my leg back and finding my chair pose again. And then the mountain pose. And then noticing if things are a little more even than they are. Again, there's always the little asymmetries, but the more I check in, the more I start to notice those. And so I uh, recognize them without even trying. So you can step back into down dog or you can fold forward and come into a squat. We are gonna get to a seated position on the floor. Oh, so I'm gonna do that through one more <laughs> little down dog and then get myself to the ground. But squatting is another way and just sit down. Oh. So just find a comfortable seated position and I make that sound easy. <laughs> 
Sometimes you have to sit up on a couple of pillows to make it comfortable. We're gonna to end tonight with a pranayama practice, a breathing practice. And you can do this with your um, dominant hand to manipulate the nostrils, or you can do it uh, with just your awareness. So we're gonna do a little alternate nostril breathing. Now, we're gonna begin on the left. In the yoga way of thinking about things, the left nostril is the gateway to the cooling channel, the kind of calming channel of the body, the lunar channel. And since we're still kind of in this influence of the full moon from yesterday, it feels kind of nice to start in that lunar way. But if for some reason you need to uh, be a little more active over the next couple of hours, you can start with the right nostril instead. That's the active um, solar channel in the yoga way of thinking about things, which again, most of this stuff dates back to the Middle Ages. And this kind of thought um, was really explored during the Hatha Yoga period um, from about the year 1000 and another 500 or 600 years after that. So, you know, <laughs> take it in, apply current medical information into, into the world and then see what happens, like see what it does for you. I find it really interesting. Now, you have to make sure that both your nostrils are open and that you can breathe through them. So again, <laughs> you can do this without manipulating the nostrils. So you can just pay attention to the left nostril and then the right and then the left and then the right. And that will eliminate any issues you may have with a nostril being closed or blocked. Um, we're not trying to cut off our oxygen supply. Okay, so take a big breath. And then you're gonna um, exhale and close off the right nostril or simply pay attention to the left nostril and inhale. When it's time to exhale, switch nostrils and exhale through the other one or switch your attention. Inhale with that same nostril. When it's time to exhale, switch first and then exhale. Inhale when it's time. Switch and then exhale. Inhale when it's time. Switch and exhale. So that's the pattern. So we're gonna do about five or six more sets. If you get breathless, just let go of the nostrils and just pay attention. And let yourself breathe or take a little break. Now, when you get to about the fifth or sixth set and you've come back, the next time you exhale through your left nostril, you're gonna stop. And then just pause for a moment and notice. And sometimes if it's your first time doing any breath work pattern, it's often a little jarring or a little awkward feeling not your first rodeo here with the alternate nostril breathing just notice how it impacts you so this is thought to be a balancing breath something like this kind of notion we've been playing with with notice the right side notice the left side notice both sides so similar idea but with the breath right so we're noticing the right side noticing the left side noticing both sides so it's thought to sort of create an equilibrium or a sense of balance leaning towards the calming channel because we started with the left nostril which is usually the way it's done, but 
as with all yoga, it's a good experiment. So if it brought you to that sort of a place where you feel a little more calm, a little more centered, a little, you know, a sense of kind of equilibrium, then put it in your pocket. You can use it later. If it didn't have that impact on you, you can either keep playing with it and see if it changes over time or put it on the proverbial, you know, imaginary shelf um, and come back to it in a few years because sometimes it takes a while um, for things to become interesting. <laughs> so we're going to do just a few moments of Shavasana since we're here. Um, and generally for me, this is a nice little segue. It's that kind of a breath work pattern. So I'm going to cover with a blanket because it's a wee bit chilly. <laughs> and a little more chilly on the floor than standing up. And if when you get down, you realize, oh, it would be nice to have like a little back massage or the little windshield wipery kind of leg movement or anything like that, you can do that. You can re rest with your feet on the floor. You can rest with your legs thrown up over the couch or a chair or whatever you have furniture wise in your space. If you're in a bedroom, maybe up on the bed um, so that you have a little kind of um, inversion to end your practice, a mild inversion the head and the heart and the hips all kept on the same plane. Um, it's a mild, a partial inversion, but it's quite nice and restful. Um, a little less restful when you start uh, piling things a little higher than other things. But for sure restful while everything is on an even plane. And I've just got this slight little incline here with the pillow under my legs, which takes pressure out of my low back. Oh. And then again, just, you know, like we did at the beginning, just arrive here in this moment, let everything else go, including the practice we just did. And just let yourself surf in this present moment with the breath. And this notion of letting go, surrendering, becoming receptive. you are receptive and you, you know, like a radio become kind of, <laughs> maybe you'll tune into things, right? Tune into your intuition or your creativity and you get to decide what channel you're on. So often we find that, you know, a sense of just letting ourselves be present can help us tap into those other aspects of ourselves that maybe we block when we're too busy. Yogis, just take a gentle moment to pay attention to your breath again.
take a really big breath and see if we can feel it to our fingertips and maybe even our toes. Let it go with a big sigh. Oh. You don't have to go anywhere right away, but if you're up for it, wiggle your fingers and toes and then stretch them out. Oh, and then wiggle them again and stretch them out. Oh, I'm gonna do that one more time. And then I'm gonna do the whole body stretch. Little banana to each side. Oh. A little back massage. If you've been missing the boat poses, you could throw a boat pose in on your way to sitting. <laughs> or just bring yourself to a seated position. <laughs> the boat poses are not just for Christmas time, but I like to throw in extra ones for Christmas time. <laughs> Let's take a breath together. Nice big inhale. Big deep sigh. <sighs> Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.